of amazing new features with the 5.3 update and in this video I'm going to show you all of the settings, what they do and which ones I recommend. So to get to your settings you're going to press the middle button here and you may be in modes it may look like this but to get the settings it's going to be down here on the right. Settings. So now we have this whole list of settings. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. You could follow along with me. One cool hidden setting is if you scroll down, there's actually a user manual and this has the answer to literally every question, anything you could do in the whole software. It's really long. It's really long, but my secret is I'm not like anything special. I just sat on the couch and read this cover to cover after every update. It takes like half a day, but it will get you up to date with it. Or if you don't want to go through this whole thing, just watch all my videos. So we're going to start here with MIDI devices. This is where you're going to find everything involving your controller and connectable devices. The first one I want to talk about is going to be over here, Bluetooth MIDI devices. This is where you're going to find and connect your Bluetooth MIDI devices. So if there's one plugged in and ready to go, you'll see it here. My DJ control mix is displayed behind me, plugged in, so I can connect to it right there. Now it is connected. The first setting that I would recommend here is crossfader cutting mode. This is going to make it so that if you tap the crossfader just a little bit to the left or the right, it is going to cut it either all the way in the middle, all the way to the right or all the way to the left. This makes it a lot easier doing DJ tricks and scratching such as the chirp scratch. So I would like recommend leaving that in unless you're doing like techno or something where you're going to do really smooth, smooth transitions with the crossfader. But you could just use the volume fader for that. So I recommend keeping crossfader cutting mode on. And then here is where you're going to find your controller so that you can map it. I made a lot of videos about mapping controllers so you guys could check that out. I'm not going to get into it, but it is really easy and really fun to map these controllers. Next is advanced. I would only recommend keeping these two on. Deactivate loop when jumping outside loop and always quantize loops to the beat. I would keep these two off. And then this is just the format and stuff, not really that important, so we're not going to spend much time in it. Next is going to be Liveberry. This is really important. Remove songs from queue when it's played. So if you have songs in your queue playlist, and when, once you play them, they will disappear so you don't do the big DJ mistake by playing two, two songs in one, playing the same song twice in one set. So here in Appearance, we have queue points. First one is high contrast or low contrast. So let me open up our cue points here. So we have our cue points open. So with high contrast, the whole button turns the color that you set it to. And then in low contrast, just the arrow symbol is going to be the color. I find it a lot easier to see in high contrast. So that's what I leave it in, but it's up to you and how you like it. I really like seeing the colors, so I leave it on high contrast. Next is, this one's a little complicated. It's start Q button. So right now I have it on Q. So if we go to our waveforms, we pick a spot in the song. Let's say I wanted to be right right here. So now we press this Q button. And it acts as a temporary Q button. But if we move our, if we scrub through the track, go to another spot, press Q again, it is going to skip there. So it's a Q button, but there's only one button. But now if we go back to appearance, so watch the Q button down here to the bottom right, bottom left. Now we change it to set and jump. So now we get two buttons to do this. So if we set it here, it's the same thing, but now we could go anywhere else in the track. And then once we press the Q button, the jump button, it's going to go back to the one we set. And then if you want to set a new one, you could press set. So it makes it easier. It's not going to move it on its own. So I would recommend leaving it with the two buttons. 
unless you're used to DJing with CDJs and other equipment where there is only one Q button, but it's up to you. I, I only really DJ with this software, so it's more comfortable for me to use set and jump. The vinyl tape marker, that'll set a tape marker where your cue point is set. So let me just move this. And then you can see that tape marker there. This is like an old school thing when people used to DJ with just turntables and no computer or software. And they would actually put a strip of tape on the actual record deck. Pretty cool old school feature that's there. If you like turntablism and old school DJing in classic mode, then you might want to keep that on. Next is show full art artwork. So, but here we have the DJ Cubert album art. So full artwork, you see the whole disc is the artwork. But if you deselect it, it's kind of like the old school records where there was just like a label taking up like 20% of it in the middle. I like to see it. I think it's cool. So I keep it on full artwork. And now here are our waveforms. We could show the minute markers. And then if we turn it off, And then you could also show BPM change markers if you have a if you play songs that have different BPMs throughout the songs. I really never do that, so I keep that off. So we're moving right along. I would just like I said before keep the remove songs from queue. None of this other stuff I will really change. Sound. So crossfader curve. You have all of these linear, consistent power, dipped, cut. I keep it on default, but this is going to change the way the crossfader reacts as you move it. So you might be used to different ones from different softwares. I'm used to default, but I recommend checking these out, moving the crossfader, seeing what it does, and seeing which one works for you and your DJing style. Next, EQ type. You could do classic or isolator. I keep it on classic. Again, test it out for yourself. Filter resonance, this, this adds kind of like a resonance, I guess, sound to your to when you use the filter. So listen to it on high. So it adds like a resonance. It doesn't just take out the lows. It, it takes out the lows and adds resonance. And then now we can change it to low. So on low, it pretty much just takes out either the, the it takes either the the low frequencies or the high frequencies and does very little resonance, whichever one you're used to. I like the resonance sound, so I keep it on high volume. This one is, is a really important one: auto gain. So here are our gain controls. It's one of the most difficult controls to use, especially if you're just using the iPad. But watch when I put a new song on. See how it adjusts automatically. So pretty much you're not going to have to use the gain control in this software. Just forget about the gain control. It has a really good auto gain and you don't have to worry about it because the knobs are really hard to use. And I think that's why they did it. They don't really want you using the gain control, but you could if you wanted to. And then we have audio limiter. This will just make sure you don't break someone's speakers if you're DJing at like a club or a bar and using their sound system. It keeps it from clipping. And then the headphone pre-cueing, this will make it so it automatically selects which side the headphones are. So if crossfader or volume is on on the right and not the left, then you'll hear the track on the left. And then vice versa, really good feature. And it gives you an extra button on a small controller to map, such as the Newmark DJ to go to touch. I'm going to make a separate video about DVS, so we're going to skip that. General. I would definitely turn start playback off. So watch. I load up a track and then it doesn't play. You could decide when you want to play it. But now if we turn that feature on. And when you first download the app, it will automatically be on. So if you're wondering why it's doing that, then this is the setting to change. Now we... As soon as you load up a track, it starts playing, which could throw off your mixes. I don't like it, but you may like it, so you could keep it on. These two I keep off. Reset EQ, reset Neuromix. Protect Active Deck. So 
Now this deck is playing on the right. If we go to load up another song, it says right deck is protected. You are about to load song onto an active deck. Do you want to proceed? So if you accidentally were loading a song onto the wrong deck, it protects you from stopping the music and ruining your DJ set and doing a big DJ mistake. So it's just a safety feature. And then if you want to load it, of course you can. You could change the sync type. I like to keep it on BPM and beats. Maintain sync on song load. I keep that one on. Tempo range. This is going to affect how much BPM you can change. I would recommend keeping it in the middle because now you could do 25%. You could go up, go down. The lower you do it, the more precise you will be with your with your BPM slider. So if you're using like a smaller controller, then that might be helpful. And then if you like doing big BPM changes, then you could change it all the way up to 75, but then it's going to be really hard to be precise. So that's why I would recommend keeping it in the middle. So either 16 or 25, I like 25. Start and stop playtime. This is going to like, has to build up the RPM to start the track. So on zero, the song just starts. But if we go all the way up, you could hear it speed up. I don't know why you would do that for starting songs, but it's up to you if you like the old school kind of building the RPMs then you could do that, but I would keep that at zero. Same thing with the stop. The only time I would adjust the stop time is if I'm doing a big BPM to small BPM because it adds kind of like a crashing sound. So it could, a good way to switch from large BPM to small BPM if you do that trick. And then crossfader effects is over here. I don't really use crossfader effects that much, but I keep this on. And then audio devices, this is where you're going to decide if you have a MIDI device or some type of device connected. Choose where you want the main output to be, whether your speakers, Bluetooth speakers, if there's multiple speakers plugged in, you could choose. Pre-queuing, you could split the output. So when you split the output, now we can see when we move the crossfader to the left, Headphones are on the left now. Headphones are on the right now. Works the same way with the volume slider. So whichever track doesn't have volume, then you're going to have the headphones there. Really great feature. And if you're looking on how to use your headphone splitter, it's going to be over here in audio devices. You could have a booth monitor, a speaker facing you, so you could hear what's going on. And then you could also use a microphone, or you could use the microphone on your device. So these are all this these are all the current settings with the new 5.3 update and if you want to learn about DJ Pro's hidden features check out this video over here thank you